Well, I wanted to take the opportunity before we start our, our time together this morning, just to give you a brief update where we're at in terms of the restrictions easing. As you know, the government's starting to ease some of the restrictions around the place. And so the church council met on Monday night. And at this stage, we're opening for our first, or we're aiming for our first service to be on the 9th of August. Um, so that's still up in the air a bit, as things are changed, uh, that could change as well. But just to give you an idea of where we're at, that's the date that we're aiming towards. As we get closer to that date, uh, there will be things that our church leaders and others will need to know in terms of how we go about cleaning, um, how we organise people in and out of the church and things like that. We'll get to those things as we, we get closer and then we will pass that information on to the wider church. But be assured we're, we're looking forward to the day when we can come back together once again and as a church family in the one place to be able to worship the Lord our God together. So keep in prayer for the church, keep in prayer for one another, and we look forward to seeing you sitting in this building together once again. Well, let us pray. So Father God, we thank you that your spirit is with us. We thank you that we were able to celebrate Pentecost last Sunday and that reminder that your promise of the Holy Spirit, that promise that Jesus gave to all his people, that time came to pass 50 days after. And we pray, Father God, that as your spirit ministers to us now, as we hear from your word, that Father God, that we would hear that same spirit speak to us and empower us the way that you did your early believers. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you have your Bible, take it and turn to the book of Psalms. And I'm reading from Psalm 130. So it's Psalm 130. And it says there that it, Psalm 130 is a song of ascents. And it says, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. If I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He, he himself, will redeem Israel from all of their sins. Well, sometimes when we read Bible passages, we can find it hard to relate to what the writer was experiencing when they put those words down on paper or parchment. This is particularly so with the Psalms and especially with Psalm 130. You see, the writer starts from a position of absolute despair over his sin. I don't mean that he's just had a passing awareness or that he had thought about it for a moment in time before moving on to his next task. You see, he was full on overwhelmed with just how bad a sinner he really was, just how unclean he was because of his actions and his thoughts. It's like sitting on the ocean floor and the water is his sins. Everywhere he turns, he is reminded of his sins. Well, I would hazard a guess that not many of us have ever really felt the weight of our sins upon us to this extent. We've never been overwhelmed, overly crushed by those things. But the truth is, if we were to list every one of our sins, we would be staggered to see just how sinful we really are. The Bible puts it plainly for us. In Isaiah 53, it says, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. When it says his, it's his or her. And again, in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sinned. Well, if you don't believe the Bible, Look at society as a whole. 
particularly what's happening in, in America this week, and it becomes obvious just how bad this world has gotten. Sin exists. It is real. It is very real. And everyone, every person is guilty of committing it in some way. And what is worse, the more we try to not do it, the more aware we become that we can't stop doing it. And so in Romans chapter 7, verses 15 to 24, Paul writes, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. That's God's law. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do, I not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body of death? Wow, strong words from Paul. As Paul says, he can't stop sinning, no matter how hard he tries. And his response? What a wretched man am I! Paul and the psalmist had much in common. Both knew what it was like to have the crushing weight of sin upon them. Can you imagine if the two of them got into a room together, the things that they would have said together? That would have been one depressing meeting. Yet they also had something else in common. It wasn't just the sin. See, both of them knew that there was hope. They both knew where the answer to their problem lay. And it says, but with you, but with God, with Jesus, there is forgiveness. With the Lord, uh, with the Lord, there is forgiveness. Romans 7, 24 to 25 says, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Their hope, our hope is in God himself through Jesus himself. But with you. There is forgiveness. Well, how does that make you feel this morning? Relief? Freedom? Joy? Hope? All these words spring to mind. See, no matter how deep the hole becomes, Jesus can and will forgive if we only cry out to him. Without forgiveness, we can only flee from God. With it, we can come near to him. And in Matthew 21, we find Jesus' words, If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If we believe, if we have faith that Jesus will do all that he has promised, we will be forgiven. No ifs, muts, buts, maybes. Faith is the key. And the psalmist knew it well. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. When it comes to placing their faith or trust in something, many Christians prefer to have one foot in God's camp and the other foot in the world, rather than placing all their faith in God alone. We, see, oh, we say sorry, that we trust God, and yet our actions betray us. We treasure our possessions, gain status by our job titles. We look for answers to our problems with psychiatrists in science and technology. Basically, we will turn to anything for help before we turn to God. We will go anywhere. We will pay anything to get that help before we go to God. Now, I want to say that these things that I've mentioned can be good things to use as long as we also turn to God for help as well. 
He often supplies these things to meet our needs, but we shouldn't place our trust in them. Use them, but don't trust them the way that we would trust God. See, the psalmist writes about this. While he has confessed his sin to God, he is still experiencing the consequences of those sins. Everything hasn't suddenly become rosy because God has forgiven him. Instead of looking for something to fix his problems, he knows that in God's time, the answers will come. The solutions will come. That God will look after him. Yet what could be a painful time, the psalmist knows is a time of opportunity. A time where he can look forward to God working. There is no space within him to turn to others' answers because his entire self, his entire being, his soul is tuned into waiting upon God. Well, how can this be? It's because he knows that God is faithful to his word, to his promises. For this psalmist, these are the promises made to Abraham. For us, it is the promises found in the entire Bible particularly those made by Jesus. Instead of running from thing to thing, trying to better our situation, we should and can wait patiently upon the Lord. And we have hope. You see, just as the watchman knew that the sun's rays would eventually shine in the east, telling them that a new day is dawning, so too does God promise that our hope is not misplaced. We just have to have patience, something that God promises to help us with as well if we would only ask, if we would only allow him the opportunity. In verses 7 and 8 it says, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Well, in these verses, we continue to see faith in action. The psalmist is so certain that God will act, that God is capable and willing to forgive sin, he declares it to all Israel that their hope as a nation is found in God alone. He can't keep the news to himself. He's so excited about it. The answer to his problem of sin is the same answer that the entire nation of Israel And not just Israel, everywhere today, they need it. In years gone by, and every now and then, even in the Ipswich Mall, you would hear a preacher calling out to those passing to repent or burn in hell. That's not what's happening here. Instead, we see the positive reasons why the nation should turn to God. And these reasons still hold today. The first reason? In the Lord is unfailing love. He will never leave his people, then or now. The second reason, with the Lord is full redemption. Only God is capable of forgiving the sins of the nation. And this should be our message to our nation today. No amount of government programs or charities, whilst good, will ever make a nation right before God. But if we don't tell them, how will they know? So what is it that God is trying to say to us this morning through this particular psalm? Number one, we are sinners and because of our sin, we cannot stand before God. Number two, if we call out to God, he will forgive us. Number three, we should put all our faith in God because we can trust that he will act. And number four, we need to share this message with those we come into contact with. It is a message worth sharing. Of all the messages that we get every day, this is a message worth hearing and worth sharing. Well, some of us this morning, we need to acknowledge, perhaps for the first time, that we are sinful people. It's a very hard step to make, I know. But without recognising our sinful nature, we cannot hope to come before God and have him recognise us. He just can't abide by sin. For others of us, we may have recognised that we are sinners, 
but haven't actually done anything about reconciling with God. We know we have the problem, but we're too scared to come to him with it. Well, if this is you this morning, it's the time now to ask him for forgiveness. Still others may have asked God for forgiveness, but haven't really placed their trust in him for everything. We just do it in little bits, in the things that aren't so important to us. Now is the time to put your hope, your faith in him. And for those of us that have done all these things, we have a great message of hope for the world, don't we? How many of us are going to go out there and share it? And when I say go out there, keeping your limits, of course. Well, out of the depths, I cry to you. Sounds like a good way to start talking with God, doesn't it? Well, then let's pray to him now. So let's pray. So, Father, I pray this morning for those that are listening that haven't yet accepted you as their Lord and Saviour. Lord, I pray that you would um, just speak to them in the, in the quiet, into their hearts, into their minds. Let them know of your presence, Father God. Let them know that in you there is forgiveness of sin. That, Father, that you want nothing more than to be able to draw them into your family, to be able to call them your children, and to lavish them with your love and with all that comes with being a child of God. I pray, Father, that they would um, commit themselves to you, and that, Father, that you would come and be with them and be their God. Father, for others that are watching, they, they know that they have done the wrong thing by you, but haven't been able to take that step. Lord, I pray that they would see that there is nothing to fear in you when we come to you in repentance, when we come to you in, with, in sorrow. That, Father, that you are a good God, that you are a God who loves to forgive, you are a God who loves to draw people to yourself that loves to pour out everything that you have into your your people. Father, forgive their sin and help them to turn away and turn back to you. Father, for for those of us that haven't put our trust fully in you, Father, we, we call ourselves Christians. We believe that we have been saved because we have given our lives over to you. But Father, there are things that we've held back. There are things that we still do or say or keep for ourselves that we can't quite hand over to you. Lord, help us to place our trust in you fully, to trust you in every part of our lives. And that, Father, that as we do so, we will see our lives change, that we will see ourselves become more like your son, Jesus Christ. And that, Father, that we will see new opportunities and new, new desires, and that we'd see a new life before us, Father as we live for you. And Father, for those of us that have tried to do all those things, that Father, that love you, that seek to do your will, Lord, help us to take this message to all those people in our lives that need to hear it. Father, not in a way that brings condemnation, but in a way that lifts up, that builds up, that draws people to yourself. Father, help us to do your will, we pray. And so, Father God, we thank you that you are alive, that you speak to us, that you are with us. Father, bless us and keep us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, if you had made a, that first time decision or if you um, have handed your life over to God in a, a new way, um, if you handed your life over to Jesus in a, in a new way, I pray that you would let me know. Um, I have an email address, lightcutbaptistchurch.gmail.com. Uh, you'll find it on the, the church uh, Facebook page and on the web page as well. And just shoot me an email, let me know. I'd love to be able to get in contact with you. Be blessed.